preparing to sing, you might be asking, well, gee, I'm wearing a mask. How come they're not? Well, according to stage three restrictions, as long as the uh, employees of a business, and yes, I know employees imply paid, but you're on a free internship, Jim. Thank as, you. As long as we maintain physical distance, we don't need to wear a mask but all participants need to. Now, I invite you, because we're in stage three, I now and also invite you to sing. You just don't have to murmur your lips. You can sing God's praises as long as you have your masks on.
salvation. Jesus, for us Welcome to worship, whether we're worshiping in person like you folks or whether we're worshiping online, it's good to be together as we praise God. Hopefully you'll see a difference when you go online today to catch the, uh, the message again just to try to figure it out. Uh, <laughs> more money has been poured into more equipment to hopefully improve the audio and the video online. Due to something that I don't understand, we are live streaming right now on the church Facebook page, and then later it'll be placed on the YouTube page. You may ask why. You may ask Ben. You may ask Robin. You may not ask me, because I don't know. But this morning, what a freedom it is. We can sing. We can praise God. And yes, these masks are annoying for you, and I'm sorry that you have to wear them. And there will come a time when we won't, but that time isn't right now. I want to thank the volunteers for making worship through COVID-19 through COVID possible. And our prayer is that our worship glorifies God and inspires each one of us to share the good news in our hurting world. And just a little personal note, I want to say hi to my Aunt Cecile. You watched the... Uh, oh, you're on. Hi, Aunt Cecile. It's nice to have you with us. And Mom, are you with us this morning? Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. And it's my favorite sister's birthday today. Natalie is her name. She's my favorite sister. She may not be on. She could be working for all I know. But it's just nice to have some family here worshiping with us today. The announcements are, um, 
this sounds a little harsh coming from the pastor, but if a door-to-door -door salesperson comes to your door, slam the door and do not even speak to that person. I had a young woman come to the door a few days ago trying to sell me some bug repellent service. I said, no, thank you. And then later, I read on Facebook that one of the friends from St. Paul's, one of our dear friends from St. Paul's, was ripped off by the same organization, over $600 exchanged hands. Now, she was putting a stop payment on the check, and hopefully that will prevent it. But they're out there, and they're just preying on people. So unless it's Girl Guide cookies, don't even open the door. And tell them your pastor said that, and they'll wonder what kind of pastor that is, but uh, I'd rather protect you, fee you, you people. Other announcements? Then let's move on. We light a candle in our worship as a symbol of the presence of Christ, and we know that Jesus has promised to be with us through the presence of the Spirit, but this is an act, a physical act that we make recognizing that. So come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and by your presence may our worship be blessed. Our call to worship this morning is taken from the Old Testament. It's from Psalm 16. Therefore, my heart is glad, and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure, for you will not abandon my soul to shoal or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Let us praise God with the hymn. It's in the book of praise, but no praise book, so it's on the screen. I'm going to live so God can use me. It's a hymn from our hymnal. Yes. Okay. You're over already? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Want to do the last two verses again? I'm going to pray so God can use me. Thank you. 
Come on up to the screen with your hands nice and clean. I have such a wonderful, wonderful scripture to share with you this morning. I really hope you're having a good day. And I know some of you, the McLeod kids, I know you're at the Splash Park right now. That's right, the minister knows all. <laughs> but you can watch us later in the, in the afternoon in the cool of your house. But I want to share this morning how difficult it is to know something really, really good and to have to keep it a secret. Let me give an example. Say you learned that it was somebody's birthday, but it was a surprise. And maybe there was going to be blueberry cheesecake with candles to celebrate. And you love blueberry cheesecake. And you just, and, and Tony's in on this as well. And, and you're so excited. You're almost bursting because you want to share this great, great secret with everybody because you know it'll make everybody happy. But for whatever reason, maybe it's a surprise. Mom says, no, don't say anything. And, and you're just vibrating. I can picture some of you just shaken to tell this wonderful good news. But you can't. And then when you finally are told, well, yes, you can. Well, then it's, it's like the whole building shakes. You're so excited. And you share the good news. Well, we see that in our scripture this morning from the book of Acts, chapter 4. And it's Peter and John, those are two disciples, and they're sharing the good news about Jesus. And the Sanhedrin arrest them and tell them that you must stop sharing this story. And they refuse. And their excitement builds and builds, and they still share the good news. And thousands of people come to believe in Jesus Christ. And, and the, my favorite verse in Acts 4 is verse 31. Let's see if I could find it here. Here we go. Now remember, Peter and John were praying. They had been sharing the good news. And it says, after they prayed... The place where they were meeting was shaken. The building shook. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the Word of God boldly. The Sanhedrin were threatening to arrest and put into prison for a long time Peter and John. They said, you have to stop talking about Jesus. And Peter and John just couldn't keep the good news inside of them. Even though they were in danger, they had to share this good news. And as a reward, the Spirit descended upon them. But they already had the Spirit because they were preaching. But everyone in that community, everyone in that house worshiping and praising God were filled with the presence and the, the, the power of the Holy Spirit. And they went out into the world. Not only was the house shaken, but the whole world would come to be shaken by the good news and the power that it has. So this morning, I want you to know that you don't have to keep Jesus secret. You can share Jesus with everyone, with your family, with your friends, Go online, say hi to aunt so-and-so, and say, guess what? I love Jesus, and you should too. Share that, and the world will be a much better place. I really miss you folks. I really, really do. It's not the same talking into a camera lens. But I look forward to the time when we can be together. But we can pray together right now. 
Let's use our family prayer that we use all the time. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As our tradition has been since uh, we've come back, is that yes, absolutely, your offering is desired, but we don't go out and, and pass the plate just for COVID reasons. So there is a basket that if you would like to make a donation to St. Paul's or to Knox, just place your envelope in the basket and it will be forwarded to the appropriate congregation. Let's pray. Actually, this morning, uh, a portion of this prayer is a paraphrase. In Acts 4, the scripture that I'll be reading this morning, there is a beautiful prayer that I've, I've taken those words and then toyed with them a little bit. So, let us pray. O oh, sovereign God, you who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them, you who spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouths of your servants, our father David, who questioned the foolishness of humanity when he said, Why do the nations rage? And why do the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. And Lord David was so right. Even today our leaders gather with unbelievers to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you have anointed. Lord, they need to listen to your guidance so that our country could be built up and know peace and justice and hope. Loving God, consider our society's apathy and its willingness to sell itself for comfort and be willing to live in squalor and sin. And enable your servants, we who worship you, we who gather online and in the flesh, to speak your word with boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Christ. And loving God, we, we pray this morning for concerns that have been shared with us we pray right now for a situation that requires your most intensive presence. We pray for someone who is being afflicted by the devil. They cry out to you for help, and Lord, drive away the demon and heal the flesh sore wounded. Amazing God, we lift up our brother Stuart and ask for healing for him. He is sorely tried by pain and and. Father, like Job, his faith is strong, but please give him relief from this newest cause of pain. Give him relief from his trials and tribulations and remind him that you are always with him and you have never abandoned him. Loving God, we share a prayer of thanksgiving this morning from a mom and a dad we give you thanks that for Jamie McRae, she has driven safely across the great outback desert as she makes her way safely to the sunshine coast of Australia and then off to a new adventure in Bali. Loving God, anything could have happened, but you held her in the palm of your hand. And we thank you for your work in her life. Lord God, you know everything. So please place your healing hand upon Deborah. She is in such terrible pain. Lord God, free her from the grips of pain and give her rest. 
Father, we pray for Gil as he waits and waits for surgery. We pray for people who wait for their work to reopen so that they may work by the sweat of their brow and earn their bread through the strength of their arms rather than receiving from the benevolence of our government. Lord, we pray for Jane and Mike. We pray for them and their co-workers who labor in the vineyard of care that's called the food bank. And we thank you for their willingness to serve in these difficult times. For the endless sterilizing, the endless reaching out, encouraging of clients. Lord God, I thank you for their faithfulness. And I pray for young moms carrying their unborn children. Loving God, protect those babies, protect those mothers. Give them healthy, healthy gestation and births and your kingdom will be glorified. Lord God, I pray stubborn, or grudgingly, I pray grudgingly for the young woman who has been cheating people in Van Cleek Hill and Hawkesbury. Please, Lord, place a burden on her heart for what she has done and is doing to people, and guard people from falling for her lies. Create in her a clean heart so that she will seek honest employment rather than cheating people. Lord God, we pray for those people who are so selfish and those people who are so afraid that they will not follow the laws of our land regarding masks. And in their fear and in sense of entitlement, they lash out in anger. Lord, we pray this morning for those who celebrate their racism for those who imprint entitlement cards to avoid masking. We pray for those who are so self-absorbed, so wicked, that they receive a healing from this sin before it's too late. Loving God, grieving God, we pray for those who mourn the murder of two little girls, Nora and Romy, innocent, undeserving of such a terrible fate. Lord, we can't understand the mind that could conceive of this atrocity. We pray for the evil to be driven out, and we ask for charity towards the murderer, even though it feels alien to pray for him. Loving God, a personal prayer, I thank you for lifting from me the burden that I have carried for a while now. You have opened my eyes to the beauty in my community and in people's hearts. Lord, keep my eyes, keep all of us focused on the cross and the glory that comes from service. And Lord, stretch out your hand over this church and bless these people with a renewed sense of purpose and power that is based only on you. And as Paul wrote in Hebrews 4, let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. In the name of the risen Savior, we pray. Amen. Let us praise God with the hymn, Spirit, Lead Me. Or till the storm passes by. Or till the storm passes by. Pardon? Or till the storm passes by. Yes. Okay. Is that the one? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> till the storm passes by. In Fog 501. He's just testing us. In the dark of the midnight Have I oft hid my face While the storms howl above me And there's no hope 
We all have experienced storms in our life, and we really need to hold on to Christ. Hold on to Christ. He is our anchor that will get us through the storm. This morning I'm going to read from the book of Acts, chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. This is called Peter and John before the Sanhedrin. The priests and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John, and because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed, and the number of men grew to about 5,000. The next day, the rulers, elders, and teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there, and so was Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and the other men of the high priest family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, If we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a cripple and are asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead that this man stands before you healed. He is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the capstone. Salvation is found in no one else, 
for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished, and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. So they ordered them to withdraw from the Sanhedrin and then conferred together. What are we going to do with these men, they asked. Everyone living in Jerusalem knows that they have done an outstanding miracle, and we cannot deny it. But to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn these men to speak no longer to anyone in this name. Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or to teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, Judge for yourselves whether it is right in God's sight to obey you rather than God, for we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. After further threats, they let them go. They could not decide how to punish them, because all the people were praising God for what had happened. For the man who was miraculously healed was over 40 years old. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David, when he said, Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The king of the earth take their stand and the rulers gather together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform miraculous signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they had prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.